Hello, my name is Becky Thorpe, Curriculum Manager at Matrix TSL. In this video, I'm going to be looking at using the simulation debugger. Now, in order to do that, instead of opening a new project, I'm actually going to open the project that I created for my variables video. So I'm going to open that counter project there. And so instead of starting afresh, I've now got my flowchart that I made with my variables video. I've got my LED array over here, and I've even still got the variable that I made. There's my count variable. So when we run this, the LEDs count. They're counting in binary there quite nicely. Now, this box pops up when we're running the simulation, and you can see it says simulation debugger. Now, if you don't want that on your project, you can get rid of it within the simulation. When you stop your simulation and you run again, it will pop up again there. You can click and drag and move it about. You can actually um, dock it if you want it fixed. I quite like it floating about so that I can move it about. You can make it smaller if you want to discreetly tuck it away but still have it on the screen. And if you stop the simulation and then you open, run the simulation again, that will come back up from where you left it before. Now, I want to be looking at this today, so I actually want it quite clearly so that I can see it within my um, screen. Now, as we've seen, if I stop the simulation, that box goes away. I want to change some of the things on here, so I don't want it to go away, but I'm going to pause it so that I've still got the box here. Now, remembering that we had a variable called count, if I add a variable and I clicked on that little um, triangle there, add the variable, I can select count and I can OK that. So now, this simulation debugger is actually checking the value of my variable and it's giving me that value here. So now when I run, and as well I can change the speed of this here as well, that's something that's quite good to do. Now if I run here as well, you can see that while my LEDs are counting, my simulation debugger is giving me a live value of my variable. Now, this is a simple project, so I've only got one variable, but if you've got quite a few variables there, you can, you can have the whole list of them going down there. You can move that down. You can track whichever you want to do. Now, something I haven't shown you yet is if I um, pause this, so far we've looked at the run. You can move each of these over one by one. So if I step into my file, it's only moving by each one. It's doing each step, so I'm not running the whole thing. So as I step into the next, so at the moment we're here, we're on the count sending nothing to the LEDs, and my value here is zero. If I step into it again, it says count it is equals count plus one. If I, and I've still got the value of zero at that particular point. And now, as I kind of move out of that, it tells me that the count is one. There's the delay there. It's going round. As we go round, that value of one is sent, and then we're adding another one. As I move and step out of that, this value I'm expecting to go to two, and there we go. So that's a really nice way to check of any problems that you've got. I'm using this one, which is step into. There is another one here, which is step over. If you've got a flowchart within a flowchart, the step into would go into the next one. The, the, the step over would miss that one that you've got. So at the moment, I'm just using this one, but that's something you might want to look at if you've got a flowchart within a flowchart. Um, something else that I can do here is I can actually edit this value. Um, I can click on that value and I can actually edit um, the value of my variable. So for instance, if I wanted to call that 25, and then I'm running through, you can see it's taking that value and it's carrying on from there. Um, something else is this simulation delay here. At the moment, 
um, I've got a delay of 300 milliseconds. So as I'm running my simulation, that's not a very long time to wait. If I did have a very long delay here, let's say we've got something like um, uh, 600 seconds. Okay, if I've got something like that and I'm running it here, it's going to get to there and we're going to wait for a very long time. We're going to be waiting 10 minutes. What I can do is I can tell it to skip that. Okay, and now as I'm going through every time I get to that point, I can tell it to skip. I can still check my values, I can check the value of the variables, I can see what's happening, but I can skip over that long delay if that's, if that's quite long and it's going to cause a problem. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there. I hope that helps a little bit in understanding what that box is that keeps popping up. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.